Well, it's pretty warm in here. The old stove's been going probably for a little over an hour. And according to this down here, the oven's approaching 200 degrees. I don't know how accurate that is, but the air in here is plenty warm. It's warmer than the house, that's for sure. And the stovepipe that I added has really helped. I knew it would, but it just it's nice that it, it did. Nice fire going. And I got the flu shut down. All the way over here it was closed. And when that is open, which is all the way over here, and the fire just and the heat go right across and up. And I got the damper kind of closed. It's on an angle. And that's for anybody that doesn't know, that's a plate in there. It's got some holes in it, but it restricts the flow up the restricts the draw up the uh, stovepipe. So right now what I'm trying to do is get this heat to go across the top down the side, under the oven, and then it comes up that stovepipe, but way in the back, way down low and then in the back. I guarantee you the, hot, the top of that oven is hot, or the top of that stove. Holding my hand above it. So, And I think I'll try some baking when I get... The most I've ever had that the highest is 300. And it takes a lot to get it there. It just takes, I think with the flu shut, or the damper shut rather, it won't get there, but we'll see. We'll figure something out. My favorite shot of my stove, eh? I've kept the fire going pretty good in it. I had it going for, oh, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half. I couldn't really get it above 200. So, I closed the flue, and I opened the damper, and opening the damper seems to have done the trick, and keeping it full of wood. So I went ahead and seasoned my Dutch oven, and you see it's close to 300. So, I dug around, and this little jewel here, is an infrared thermometer gun. I don't know. I don't know if it'll work or not. I don't know exactly, but you can, it has a, it shows you what the temperature is. Anyways, I poked it in that oven and it was over 300 on the back, on the floor, on both sides. The far side, which would be my right hand side, and kind of where that top is underneath that top underneath that little hole it was the hottest so it's like 318 degrees so I'm going to say the oven's at 300 I'm going to go on ahead and whip up some stuff and I'll be back and we'll see what happens with this touch up okay. well you can probably see the oven's pretty doggone close to 300 according to this ancient thermometer anyways Ooh, the handle's a little hot. And there sits a Dutch oven full of goodies. And I'm not going to tell you what it is until later, but it's the kind of thing that when you're done mixing it up, you want to lick the bowl, you want to lick the spoon, you want to lick the spatula that you clean the bowl and the spoon off with. And yeah, it's way good. And then I end up with a big glob of it on my beard. Okay. It said get the oven up to 350. Well, then it can happen. Here's my little stash of wood. That little stash of wood. But, uh, anyways, the 350 thing. I'm saying I can get that stuff cooked. I know how to do it. 
I did some bread the other day and it worked out really well. The oven doesn't cook quite as hot as a normal oven, but there's ways to get around that. Alright, see ya. Well, things are cooking. You can see I got snow on the old booters. There's a little partly cloudy going on outside. There's the old barn. The oven's going good. And I'm going to take a nap. Catch you later. Well, let's see how hot that oven is. Up a touch over 300. Well, as I suspected, I pulled it out of the oven and it was not done. But the beauty of a Dutch oven is, it's an oven. So you don't need it in an oven to work. So I got my handy dandy little infrared thermometer gun and underneath that pot right there it's about the lid is the not the lid but the top of the stove is about 410 degrees and I put some coals on top and we're just gonna let her go for a little bit. I've taken a Dutch oven off the stove and I believe she's pretty well done, but I'm going to give it just a few sec, a few minutes here, a couple, and then I think I'll take the top outside and dump those coals off, and then I don't know how to cool it down because that oven would stay hot for quite a long time, but I think I'm going to put it outside in the weather and find a place and let it cool down kind of quickly maybe just for oh I don't know 10 minutes something like that and then call it good so we'll see what goes on here pretty quick huh well I put the Dutch oven outside on a I got a wood bin that as a metal lid so dump the coals in the snow off the top and she's out there cooling down. I'm going to give her just like 10 minutes and I'm going to call the whole thing done. So, and about that time we'll go in the house and I'll show you what I came up with. Okay. Well it came out of the Dutch oven a little tough and at first I thought it was stuck so and it was, I guess, because it I had went around the edge with a knife and she seemed to loosen up. Then when I flopped her out on the cutting board, it kind of broke along here, underneath and up here. I probably should have just let it set and cool. And I probably would not have done that. But that's a round brownie. And it is, this is what it is. I buy this Kodiak cake uh, pancake mix. So I was in the store the other day, oh, a couple weeks ago maybe, and I noticed this. And I thought, you know, one day when it's ugly out or snowing or raining or something, I'm going to want to bake something. Right? So... That's what theirs looks like. Well, I bet mine looks better when I cut it. So, it's still warm. The Dutch oven cooled way down within like, oh, I don't know. Hmm. I stuck a toothpick in it, and nothing came out. I assumed it was done. I'm thinking it just needs, oh, it's still hot. Oh man.
being a little impatient maybe. Yeah, I stuck a toothpick in it. And nothing came out on the toothpick. I stuck it in like three places. But what a toothpick brings out and what I cut out might be two different things. Alright. I'm gonna clean up this little square. And I'm gonna let it set. Well, I'm gonna call the brownies a success. Although, and ma mainly because it tastes way, way good. They're very good. It took another, oh, another 20 minutes, half hour went by, but I took another little one inch slice out of there, and it's still a little warm, but I think a guy ought to be able to cut that and not have it fall apart, but it did fall apart. And one thing I did that the recipe does not call for is I put a gob of uh, uh, walnuts in there. Pieces, not crumbs and all that kind of stuff. Pretty good sized little chunks of walnut. Well, maybe that's got something to do with it, but I like walnuts and brownies, so tough. Tough there, I'll, I'll live with it. And another thing I did that I think I made a mistake on was uh, when I, it called for two eggs, and it called for melted butter and two tablespoons, I believe, of vegetable oil, it said. So I mixed all that together, and of course, the melted butter, it had to get a little warm, then I put the eggs in there and kind of stirred it up, and the eggs was warm enough that the eggs actually started to cook a little. I was wondering what was floating in there, and then it dawned on me, so that was definitely a mistake. Next time I just want to add those eggs, you know, whether I beat them up a little bit or not. Don't put them in that hot butter, in that warm butter. So, other than that, I'm going to just like kick back, let the storm play out for the day, and uh, it's not that cold out. I did just cut some wood and chop some wood, I guess. I'll go out there and do it again, and I'm just going to relax. So, that's shack life, my kind of drink.